keep it in bit. Oh, he oh, always wins. wins. Well, the evil he will back. never beat Wilbert. <laughs> Wilbert the Great. <laughs> Fat <laughs> men dancing, or thin men dancing. That is what we call them because that is what they do. On guard! Robert? I take you on, sir. On guard! Voila! Oh, oh, oh. Victory, 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 victory. Come on, Morris. Hello, it's, it's Michael here, Michael Walton. Is Mr. Page there? Which one do you want? Both, if possible. Come up, Michael. Come in. I'm Walter. This is Oliver. And you are our cousin Michael. Yes. That's me. I believe we met once when you were six months old. I'm sure he remembers it vividly. Have some cake. Delicious cake. Is, is that the two of you? It is indeed. As I'm sure you've guessed, I am the baby. <laughs> you do have a lot of radios. They're from our childhood. Would you like to hear one? It'll take a moment to warm up. What do you want to ask, both of us, Michael? Right, yes. Um, I've just got one question, really. I'm interested in history family history in particular, and you're the only ones left from that time. Yes. My grandmother. Yes, Celia, of course. I just wondered, what happened to her sister, Anne? She was an actress. She was indeed. She made some films. She played the best friend or the school teacher, those sort of ones. Well, that's her up there. Anne was the eldest. She was adopted, of course. As frequently seems to happen, they were desperate to have children. But they didn't think that they could have any, and so they adopted one. And then, lo and behold, along came the babies anyway. They were all very close. You didn't think it would work, did you? Let's see if we can find something more appropriate. What happened to her? Tell me. It's not always a good place to go, Michael. The past. That's a little bit better. 
Let's see if we can get a clearer signal. It had been a fantastic summer. That summer of 39. The most glorious summer most people could remember for a very long time. A year before, it had seemed war with Germany had been averted. The policy of appeasing Hitler, of reasoning with him, really had worked. And even now, it seemed it might still work. Your grandmother and Anne and Ralph had grown up in the most beautiful house with an even more beautiful garden. It was a very exciting time. Ralph was doing very well at the foreign office, and Anne had a part she was very pleased about in a new movie. It was your great-grandfather's birthday. They prepared the most wonderful table for him. Or rather, Anne had, because she was in charge of most things. <laughs> the fat men on the march. It's one of your very best tables. <laughs> I like your friend. The other one's a little dotty, isn't he? Maybe a little. But he can be great fun. And he is beautiful. Why all the knights? What are they up to? Ah, oh, it's it's something we started as children. Perhaps well, if I behave myself, I'll get to take one of these home. <laughs> They're absolutely everywhere. Do you want to see? It's all her fault. Anne started it, and then we all did them. We call them fat men dancing. This reminds me of someone I used to work with. <laughs> <laughs> and now there's no escaping them. Oh, that's George. His sister Sonia disappeared a few days ago, so he's a little upset. Well, you're allowed to put them absolutely everywhere you wanted. Nobody said no. Almost everywhere. We were not allowed in those. This is the shell line. We were not allowed to cross it. Because those buildings were stuffed with all Papa's papers that he used for his book. I bet you did cross it, though. You must have. No, we never needed to. We never have. Even now, none of us. There were so many other places to play. Do you want to see where it all started? We have time to go, don't we, Anne? Please say yes. Yes, if we're quick. Oh. Mr. Speaker! Oh, marvellous place to come to rehearse one's speech in. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. The honourable member must retract that immediately. <laughs> Both the first part and the third part. So this is where it all comes from. The stories we made up about chubby men doing heroic things. They were all deeply flawed, our knights. Overweight and lazy. We liked them like that. But they could be very brave when we wanted them to be. They slaughtered anyone who dared attack them. <laughs> Your father made some terrific speeches in the House of Commons. It's a pity he speaks so less often now. Well, his health has always been delicate. That's why he takes more of a back seat now. Yes, I've heard a lot about your papa. I've heard he's the most charming man in England. Which makes me rather nervous. What if he doesn't like me? Homecoming, Anne, you've surpassed yourself, <laughs> absolutely surpassed yourself, you all have. Henry, you've met, of course. This is Joseph Borkham, a colleague of Henry's. Joseph, these are my children. It is a delightful surprise to find it is your father's birthday. Happy birthday, Papa. Thank you. Need I ask, your mother is still getting ready. <laughs> Naturally, but she did do all the flowers, of course. Hector, very good to see you. Happy birthday. Thank you. And you must be Lawrence. I am. 
It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And happy birthday. Thank you. Well, you certainly live up to Anne's description of you. Papa. <laughs> There's no easy reply to that. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Did he say that he's one of the cleverest people in the Foreign Office and that I had better watch out because that is the truth? <laughs> Why are you here in these parts, Mr. Balcom? A little fishing. I was determined to get in some fishing, somehow. How very sensible. And coming here to such an ancient place, it's... Well, it's quite possible to think that all is right with the world. But it isn't, is it? We're not even sleepwalking towards disaster anymore, are we? We're actually going up to it and welcoming it with open arms. Well, I've certainly been known to do that in my time. Precisely in... What way are we doing that? I will tell you absolutely precisely. We're not content with letting Hitler march into Czechoslovakia and Austria. Now we're saying that's absolutely all right, old chap. Take some more countries if you really want. Are we saying that? Yes, we are. Hitler is intent on taking over the whole of Europe, and we are letting him do it so long as he doesn't bother us. He can't be allowed to go on. Forgive a statement of the blindingly obvious, or, or what I think is obvious, but evil has to be stood up to. Yes, but of course, one has to be in a position to do that. One has to have the means. Oh, of, of course, we've got the bloody means. Mm. Even if we have let Germany rearm, we mustn't exaggerate how strong she is. Under this current government, under Mr. Chamberlain, who, I might remind you, is my own leader, so I don't say this lightly, we are behaving as if we have to avoid war at absolutely all costs. So every day we do something that actually makes the situation worse. Do you really think that is true? What did you have in mind? Well, to give you just one example, I've heard rumors I've yet to find out if they're true or not, but I've heard the most extraordinary rumors that we are trying to interest the Nazis in accepting a gigantic secret loan, which, which we will negotiate for them on the international markets so they might turn their armament industry back to peaceful means. We're, we, are, we are actually planning to give them money. Well, that does sound truly bizarre, Hector. Mm. Alexander here fought in the war, of course, and got wounded, so I don't criticize him, but not enough other people are speaking out. So it's clear it's, it's up to young MPs, like me, to get rid of our present leadership, which is leading us straight towards our doom. That is quite a claim you're making, Mr. Haldane. Yes, yes, and I'm very aware it isn't a popular thing to say. The present leadership will stand no opposition, no criticism of any kind. The present leadership view Mr. Churchill as dangerous because he would stand up to Hitler. He doesn't care at all about giving offence to the Nazis. So I feel I have to do everything in my power to make sure Mr. Churchill is not ignored. Come on Thursday. The house will be empty in the afternoon. Can you come? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll still be a Cranmore. I can come. Excuse me. Very pleasant evening. Thank you. Who is that man? Strange, strange man. Thank you for such a wonderful birthday. It wasn't spoiled by Hector. No. I'm used to his fiery outbursts. And of course, there's always the possibility that he could be right. Will you read to me, darling? I love it when you read to me. What would you like me to read? It doesn't matter. Some keys, anything. My heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to be drained one minute past.
Oh, Sonia. How did you get in there? Papa's manuscript about Napoleon. <laughs> what are these doing here? Been having a good listen, have you? Mama, I found Sonia. That's splendid. So much needs doing. You didn't see anyone pass by here just now. No, dear. Must have been one of the servants. Look who I found. <laughs> she got into one of the sheds. She obviously didn't realize that it was forbidden territory. I thought you knew that. The grumpy old girl, so good you're back. Oh, Look what I found there too. Foxtrots. One of your favourites, Papa. Oh, she's been dancing in there too. How odd. I don't think I ever put gramophone records in there. I wonder how that happened. Let's see if it's still played. There's no foxtrot. I'd like to see Papa dancing to that. <laughs> That's very strange. I think this must be Joseph's doing. Mr. Balkham asked if he could store some government overflow with us. They're drowning in paper, apparently. The government needs to store things here. It seemed a harmless thing to do. The reason he gave is interesting, quite funny and rather rude, too. He said there are so few places where one can trust the servants won't go anymore, but knowing our servants, that wasn't a worry here. He didn't say that, did he? He must mean they hardly managed to clean the house, let alone the outbuildings. Yes, but people didn't count on Sonia and Anne. But why are they storing records that are labelled as foxtrots? Which clearly are not. That's probably their idea of maximum security. <laughs> Let's call everything after a dust. The battle fool, everybody. Nobody will see through that. <laughs> I know after Munich they've been recording a great number of government calls because people's note-taking has been so inadequate. But I had no idea we had some here. It's rather exciting. <laughs> Are you sure there's nobody here? There shouldn't be. Not even the servants. They've all gone to the fate. Do we have to have George watching? Sonia. Do we have to have her watching? She likes to watch people make a laugh. How many people has she watched? Oh, I've asked, but she's not telling. change of plan, which I hope is not inconvenient. It has been a quite extraordinarily busy fortnight, as it happens. First, the ball at Blenheim Palace, which I must admit was spectacular. People said it put Versailles to shame. Then there was the one at Holland House, oh, which was a 
awful crush and full of politicians and film stars. No offence, my dear. It sounds exhausting, Aunt Elizabeth. Actually, it was rather invigorating. And you're looking very well, my dear. Positively glowing. Must be the country air. I'll see you in London. Promise? Of course. Even though so much is happening, nothing's going to stop me seeing you. You don't mind me doing the crossword here, do you? Of course not, Gilbert. It won't work today. It's always the bit players who get delayed. Come on, Gilbert. No moaning today. I'm really looking forward to our big scene next week. Hmm. You are coming up for the weekend, for the picnic, so we can rehearse a little? I'm honoured to be invited, and of course I'm coming. But I don't really feel the need to rehearse. It's the same old part for me. I was a jolly old gentleman at 22. Phone call, Miss Keys. Hello? It's Lawrence. Hello. Have you heard the news? No, what? Hector's dead. What? What happened? That's terrible. I think he killed himself. Oh, my God. I haven't seen the newspaper. Yes, he must have killed himself or... Or what? No, I... I can't talk on the telephone. I'm going to Scotland to see his parents. I'll, I'll find out more. As soon as I'm back, well... Um, how long are you going for? Not long. When I'm back, I have to see you. I have to see you too. Now, there you are. For a moment, I thought you'd been called and gone without me. What's the matter? Someone I know has died. Oh, yes, Hector Haldane. I always thought he had a marvellous name. He was one of the young members of Parliament speaking out against appeasing Herr Hitler. I read one of his speeches once. Passionate stuff. He's been calling for a change at the top for a new prime minister. How sad. He was a man of potential. I saw him only two weeks ago. You weren't coming. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. It's such a long journey from the studio. And now you've got a thrilling evening to look forward to meeting our new vicar. Have you heard the news? We have. Poor Hector. It's terrible news. He was so full of life. Hello, Alexander. I'm glad to see some things don't change. The family still matters here, clearly. You should put a coat on, Celia. No wonder you're cold. Of course you're shocked, my dear. Do you know what happened? No. Lawrence didn't tell me very much. He said he thought Hector had killed himself. It's possible. He was excitable. But there was something very touching about it. And very brave. I'm so honored you were able to come this evening. 
while we're delighted to be getting our own private performance. And we are all here. You've already met yes. Kathleen, my sister, of course. Her boy is in the choir. Oh, yes. I do hope you approve. I'm conducting the choir myself tonight. It's an anthem that reaches back almost as far as your family. Let us hope he is an improvement on the last one. Are we allowed to wave at Walter? You're still looking so pale, my dear. Yes. I was just thinking about Mr. Balkum. What does he do, Papa? He works at the Home Office, doing various things. Oh, he's in the Secret Service, of course, it's obvious. Is he? Would he have taken an interest in Hector? Very possibly. But I don't think he could have bumped him off. Uh, bumped him off? Oh, Anne, your love of the dramatic. No, I didn't mean that, of course. Mind you, he's rather spooky. He seems a little odd, I admit, but he shares my love of fishing. <laughs> but it's just... Hector seemed worried about him. You can't just get rid of members of Parliament like that. Both the first part and the third part. Forgive us, even of blindingly obvious, but evil has to be stood up to. I'll ask Mr. Balkum to move all the stuff he's got stored in our shed. It's not right we have things around the house and we don't know what they are. He can do it very soon. He's coming to the picnic. We'll feed him up and then we'll get him to take everything away. What a splendid estate you have here. It's no wonder you're so proud of it, Sir Alexander. I remember hearing you speak at a public meeting about the wonders of nature. It's marvelous somebody actually remembers what one said. It was inspiring. <laughs> hmm. I know I've seen you in the theater many times. One or two performances really stood out. Your porter? In Macbeth, for instance? Oh, yes. A definitely drunken porter, as I remember. Especially towards the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, everybody. We've got to walk off all this food. Let's go to the Mossy Island. Why do we have to? I can't Come on. We can't take the baby to the Mossy Island. It's all right. I'll stay here and look after it. Don't worry, Aunt See Elizabeth. I'll soon. stay. Learn my lines. No, I don't. We'll both sit and look after him together. I think I might stretch my legs after all, my dear, if you don't mind. I'll lose all use of them if I don't get out of this ridiculous chair at once. Oliver? They must have come back for him. Oliver? Oliver? Hello! Papa!
you got Oliver? No, no, he's, he's gone. Somebody must have come back for him when I wasn't looking. He's not on the mossy island. I've just been there. Hello? Who's that? Walter, go back and get them all right now. Go on. Go and get them all right now, quick. Here. I told you to go and find them all. I've done that. They're all coming back. I came to help. Are you playing a game, Walter? No, I'm not playing a game. Did you move, Oliver? Did somebody tell you to play a game? I told you I am not playing a game. Tell me where Oliver is. Tell me where he is! And he but can't have gone far. they've taken the pushchair and everything. Oh, my God. I found his shoe. What? We'll find We all found out. We can cover a lot of ground. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Right. Oliver! Right. Oliver! 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 I think we should take this Oliver! path. Oliver! But I've looked here. Of course Oliver! I have. We're following the path. Oliver! I've been down this path. Everything's all right. Everything, everything's going to be all right. Not anywhere here. I've looked here. Of course I have. Somebody moved him. Maybe you were concentrating so much on your lines, darling. <laughs> you walked with him without realizing. I didn't walk with him. I, I didn't move him. Are you sure about that? You said you fell asleep. I didn't walk with him. I didn't move him. And yes, I'm absolutely certain of that. He did have a hell of a lot packed away in our shed. I hear they've got the Duke of Wellington to take several tons of confidential material and put it in his basement. They're so worried about communist infiltration at the Foreign Office, they'd rather put it in a Duke's wine cellar. What excuse did you give Papa to make him take it all away? I said in winter, the sheds all leak. I didn't move the baby. You ought to believe me. I do believe it. Then who moved him? It was Walter. Walter? Why would he do that? Maybe it was the boy. Who knows? Perhaps he'd had a glass of wine when we weren't looking. Or somebody asked him to move him. Why would they do that, darling? To make me seem unreliable. A bit, a bit dotty. He knows I'm friends with Lawrence and with Hector. I think we should let Mr. Balcom disappear with all his boxes and just not invite him again. Ever. We want to be sure we get rid of him. 
which I'm sure we can. Learn. We've lost a terrific chance to do a lot of snooping. So, I think that is everything. Including all the fox trots. I believe so. And there's nothing left behind in here, is there? In the house? I don't think so, Joseph. No. No, I don't know of anything. Come in. I just wanted to see how you are. I'm absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with me. Of course not. Anyway, the spooky man has gone at last. And Papa says we're returning to London tomorrow morning. Really? Yes, because Parliament may be about to be recalled. It's a bit of a crisis, apparently. But I think it's terrific we're going. Nowadays, I can't stand it down here after a couple of weeks. With no disrespect to Sonia, You'll forgive me, won't you? I really miss Horatio. Oh, Sir Alexander, I wasn't expecting you. The, the house is not aired. We had no idea you were coming back to London today, and Mrs. Hardiman is not back till the oh, end of the week. Darling. I am so sorry. No I need to alarm yourself, Betty. It's not your fault we live in unpredictable times. We can manage without Mrs. Hardiman. And there is this awful racket from next door, sir. They're getting ready for a party. There's been banging all day long. I'm sure it will all be fine, just so long as they don't throw anything into our garden. And remember to invite us. Doesn't seem to be our home at all, does it? The house all wrapped up like this. No. The FO will be a buzz. Glorious. I know it's a very sensitive subject, but with my new job, I have access to all sorts of things, and I know who to ask to find out even more. So, only if you wish it, of course, but I could find out who your real parents were. You could? So what do you think? I don't know if I want to know. For some reason, it's never really worried me who my real parents are. I don't think about it much anymore. It's a big decision. <laughs> oh, Betty. There used to be another gramophone, didn't there? An old wind-up one. Whatever happened to that? Oh, that old thing, miss. I put it away in the lumber room. Betty, it's my fault. I had to listen to something for the film I'm playing a part in.
going out, Papa? Hello, darling. Yes, to the club, where the atmosphere will be feverish, I'm sure. I need to talk to you when you have a moment. Not now, darling. There have been developments. The world goes on moving faster and faster, and I'm not at all sure we can stop that. More gramophone records, I see. Yes. I thought you gave everything back to Mr. Porkham. What is that? Oh, this is a real foxtrot for once. Is it? Good. We don't want to give Mr. Borkham an excuse to return. No, that would not be good. We'll talk when this crisis is over. I love them having a party next door as the balloon's going up. Is the balloon going up? Now? Oh, I should have been listening to the wireless more. It may or it may not be going up. Should we be held to our promise to Poland? Do we really want to go to war for them? And can this be happening all over again? That's what's going on. They're all traveling back from their country estates as we speak. It's as bad as that. There's nothing you can do, Glorious. You go on making your movie. Cheer people up. I can't just do that. I have to do something more. No, no, this is good advice, Grace. It's an absolutely splendid thing to cheer people up. They're not going to do our scene today. They've told us to go. Not today? I don't believe it. We will never be needed. The weather's not right, apparently. I've managed to get my father's chauffeur to come and pick us up. Will you come home with me, Gilbert? Who could resist such an invitation? <laughs> I want to play you something in private. It's this gramophone record. You're so much better informed about everything than I am. Flattery as well. Today's definitely looking up. We just have to stop off and pick up my brother and sister. They've been to a ball. It's not too far. This is the way to travel for a poor boy like me? <laughs> Always dreamt I'd have a car like this as an actor. Hasn't happened yet. Never got above the title. Not even once. <laughs> Time for some riotous living. Or no one has any idea what's going to happen tomorrow. So, what's the tune you want to play me? It's not a tune. It's a conversation. It's a recording of a meeting. I found it among the things that Mr. Balcombe was storing with us in Norfolk. There was another record as well of Hector screaming, really upset. The man who killed himself? Where is it? I'd like to hear that. It's broken. It got smashed. Oh. I know since the baby in the pushchair that you don't trust what I say, Gilbert. When did I say And that? I know that it's my fault that I haven't read more about the political situation because I've been too bound up with my work. But it's conceivable, isn't it, that the Secret Service are listening in and recording the conversations of those that are opposed to the government. That is possible. I would have thought it is extremely possible. Yes, and that spying and these recordings could be used to put pressure on people, couldn't they? To blackmail them into silence if necessary. That too is possible, if risky. Risky, yes, because they wouldn't wish that to become public under any circumstances. Of course not. Imagine what the supporters of Winston Churchill would do with information like that. It would bring down the present leadership immediately. Churchill would become prime minister, and that would lead to a far bolder and more aggressive approach to Germany. Blackmail. Well, I never... Although it's possible, of course, that elements in the Secret Service are taking things further than the prime minister intended. Is that what you've got on that recording of yours? Oh, no. No, it's merely a boring meeting. But I thought perhaps you would know who the people were. Why would they record a boring meeting? Perhaps because somebody couldn't be there and they didn't want notes to be taken. Yes. <laughs> That's just a slightly drunken actor's guess, of course. But now, if war comes, none of this matters. On the contrary, my dear, it will matter all the more. Some of these people, they don't want a war. They certainly don't want Winston Churchill as prime minister. They want this country to be left alone. They don't care what's happening in Europe as long as this lovely place is not disturbed. They'll probably want to make peace as soon as they can. 
maybe at any price, and give Hitler all sorts of things in return. But we shouldn't worry ourselves about that, because we will be looking down at everybody from a cinema screen, dressed in ludicrous Victorian dress. That is, if we ever get our call. Exotic birds and fountains of gold water. And Aunt Elizabeth's still here. Like me, she hasn't slept all night. So you've been up all night, Aunt Elizabeth? Yes. Still to go to bed. <laughs> I stayed up with the young people. I haven't done that for years. What amazing times we live in. I was meant to go hours ago, but I never did. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Williams, just the person I want to see. I am? You must come over here. Come on. And hear what I've got to tell you. I've been tidying up my house, or rather the servants have, in case we have to run like mice. Mm. And you'll never guess what they have unearthed. My whole collection of theater programs, many of them featuring you. No. Mm. <laughs> you and Richard II. Oh. And in the last days of Pompeii. Oh, that's marvelous. I'd love to see them. Would you? Yes. Well, <laughs> you'll have to come with me now, because if this irritating war breaks out, the whole thing will get scattered. You don't mind coming to my little house by some pools after tea? No, not at all. That would be thrilling. Gilbert. <laughs> my career in theater programs. Milk? I never kept anything. I was always superstitious. <laughs> Gilbert. Milk? Thank you. Hmm? He had an appointment. What? Yes. Um, <laughs> well, give me what you want me to listen to, dear. Your record. And then I'll listen to it when I get home. I promise. Well, I would have loved to have seen the last days of Pompeii. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> Mr. Williams. I'm late. I'm late. Well, come on! Come on, Gilbert! Where have you been? And... We have to go straight away on this, I'm afraid. No time for rehearsal. It's clouding over. We're losing the light. We need to film as soon as we can. OK, mark it, please. House of Cheney, theme 105, take one. Action. Uncle, I know you said not to take the job at the big house, but the master has been so kind to me, and it is a fine opportunity. There will be other opportunities. I know you have your eye on him, but he is engaged to another. And however much you hope, that situation will not change. You should listen to me, Jenny. Cut. Cut. Excuse me, everyone. I, I have an announcement to make. Apparently, I'm not quite sure how to put it. We're now at war. We're at war with Germany. So it's happened. Now, I know this news is very shocking, but we still have a job to do. Uh, I've asked for a, a wireless to be set up, and perhaps when it arrives, we can gather round it to take an early tea break. But for now, we'll pick up where we were. Roll up. Action! Do you understand, Anne? 
Oh, yes, I think so. Which bit do you think I don't understand? That we're at war, or what action means? Come on, for God's sake, action! Thank you, Cassidy. You're not waiting for me, are you? I'm sorry, it was a very long day. I've been watching the door. Mama has gone to bed early, but we thought we should all be together. We thought today of all days you might read to us. Thy love is better than high birth to me, richer than wealth, prouder than garments cost, of more delight than hawks or horses be, and having thee of all men's pride I boast. Goodness, Mick. What did you do last night? Sorry, miss. This is no place for you. Come along. Can you step outside. I was only a couple of minutes late. He wasn't in his dressing room. That's when I found him. They say he looks like he shot himself. They said I shouldn't ask, but that's what it looks like. Did you see a note? I didn't see much, you know. So you didn't see a note? I couldn't really look at anything. I was only a tiny bit late, and, and there he was. And I can't get through to the one location. I've called and called. It, it seems very soon it would be if they're expecting him. Yes? Can I speak to Lawrence Newbolt, please? Putting you through. I'm sorry I made a mistake. I was misinformed. Mr. Newbolt is not here. He's gone to Paris. To Paris? But he was in Scotland. He was in Scotland. And now he's in Paris. He went this morning. This morning? When will he be back? That is classified, of course. Darling, I've just seen the dreadful news in the evening newspaper about Mr. Williams. I'm so sorry. You must be so upset. Yes. It was horrible. I really was very fond of him. Does anybody know what happened? They say he shot himself. That's what it looks like. But there wasn't a note. I waited for hours to see if they would find a note from him, a message. And they didn't. He may not have written one. It's an extraordinarily emotional time right now. For me, too. It seems it was so recent, the last war. And having been there myself, darling, having fought in that delightful show, I can tell you, I dream about it. 
nearly every night. I know a lot of people are very confused. And I don't want to seem hysterical or overdramatic. You're an actress. Some of that's required. <laughs> yes, that's true. And you're so bright and original, full of your stories and drawings. Always, never lost that. Your comic nights and their adventures. Yes, and so I don't want it to seem as though I'm imagining things. I understand. And Gilbert may have killed himself after all. But what if he didn't? What if something else is going on? I mean, first Hector and then him. Why would they concern themselves with Gilbert? It doesn't seem likely, darling, that they're linked. I love you. No one knows what each day will bring at the moment, and that's very disconcerting. It applies to me as well. One thing is certain. We won't let Mr. Borgon anywhere near us. Whatever he's up to, I will keep you safe. Some things I'm still good at, Billy. I just heard the news. That's awful. It is amazing how much has changed in a day. It's incredible what you see. So coming through the park just now, I thought I saw this huge silver beast. A silver beast? It was, in fact, a barrage balloon being inflated, but it was moving by itself along the ground. And they say two million people are being evacuated today. And lots and lots of people are having their pets put down. Their pets? Hmm. Really? How awful. Yes, because they're leaving town and there's nobody to look after them, or because they feel it's being responsible. I may be going to America. To America? When are you going? Maybe very soon. Things keep changing, but at the moment the government is suggesting I should go there and try and raise funds for the war effort. Don't worry. Remember what I said. So can you go down to Norfolk to look after Aunt Elizabeth? She's staying down there. You know how she hates to be alone. Your mother will join you when she can, won't you, darling? I just need to leave this garden in the best state I can. It would be good if you could go to Norfolk, darling. Well, yes. They just want me to go back to the studio for one more day to do some sound. Miss Keys! These were in your dressing room. I, I don't know if you meant to leave them behind. I think the cigarette case is Mr. Williams. Didn't know who else to give it to. I didn't see this in my dressing room when I left. It was in a cupboard right at the back. That will be a shock seeing him again, Anne. I know you'll find it distressing seeing Mr. Williams spring back to life, so to speak, up there. Yes, of course, it's strange. So soon after. Yes, well, that's why I thought we'd get it out of the way. Get it done while we still can. Who knows where we'll be next week? You just need to do your first line again. There was some noise on it. Uncle, I know you said I shouldn't take the job at the big house. But the master is... You look radiant up there, Anne, don't you think? And it is a fine opportunity. There will be other opportunities. I know you have Gilbert's a bit detached, it. isn't he? You can well, see it. He wasn't quite there. Obviously already decided what he was going to do. Uncle, I know you think I shouldn't have taken the job at the big house. Is that... That was a little bit off, I'm afraid. Maybe you should watch the whole scene. Get in the mood. Perhaps we should have done that first. I know you have your eye on him, but he is engaged to another, and however much you hope, that situation will not change. You should listen to it again, Anne. Well, what the hell's he doing? We're saying the wrong line. It's utterly wrong. Re rewind, rewind that. I need to watch that back. You should listen to it again, Anne. 
You hear that? You should listen to it again, Anne. Uh, rewind again, please. The real line is you should listen to me, Jenny. I told you Anne instead of Jenny. Totally rewrote the line. You should listen to it again, Anne. to have my tea, dear, until you arrive. Mm. There's some slightly miserable-looking walnut cake, but the sandwiches look promising. It's been a long journey, Aunt Elizabeth. I'm just going to change. So we're exploring the objectives that we set out and agreed upon at the last meeting, and how we might achieve them in practice. And the third objective remains, I think you'll agree, as important as ever, and shouldn't be forgotten without having. And I think it will simplify matters if we combine the next two under the same heading and treat them together. I think that will save us time. We should make sure the scheme for applying the greatest possible pressure on these individuals is coordinated in one place. The operation that was mounted on the first two individuals has been successful, and they will be troubling us no more. And the third one, on Hector Haldane, is, I think, about to be achieved. But we, we do now need to give this operation a name to ease communication amongst us. Well, I can give you a name. Do you want a name? I've got the perfect name. Let's call it a Thin Men Dancing. We won't forget that in a hurry, a name like that. Thin Men Dancing? Well, that certainly is eccentric. Where did that come from? <laughs> Anyway, why not? Ralph. No chance of confusion there. Ralph. I've got the perfect name. Let's call it Thin Men Dancing. And let us see how much dancing they need to do. I did not, miss. I didn't think you could hear me. Her ladyship's wondering if you're ready for tea. Beatrice Townsend rang me yesterday. She said that at least there's one silver lining to this war. One won't have to wake up every Friday morning wondering if one has got the guest list right for the weekend. <laughs> But I expect the competition between her and Emerald Cunard will begin again very soon. They won't let a small thing like a war stop their entertaining. And nor should they, don't you agree? I agree it will take more than a war to stop them. And we mustn't let it stop us, either. We must stick together down here, my dear, or we will go absolutely mad. We will do everything together. Listen to the wireless, play mahjong, go to church, do everything like twin sisters. Yes, Aunt Elizabeth. Don't look so thoughtful, my dear. Of course, you've had such a horrid shock. Poor Mr. Williams. I hope it wasn't seeing his whole career spread out in the programs of my collection that made him so desperate. Having one's life summed up can be very dispiriting. This little war makes everything uncertain. This is the National Program from London. The first news, copyright reserved. The foreign office. For a very important Can I have extension 182 Lawrence Newbold, please? One moment. Ah. I'm sorry, there is no reply from extension 182. I to give the first part of Mr. Chamberlain's statement later. You've broken the rules already, my dear. Moving the gramophone. We're going to do everything together, remember? Now come in here. 
and let's listen to what the world is getting up to, and if we should take it seriously. I can usually only enjoy the countryside in very small doses. But it is very peaceful here. The war seems such a long way off. Although since no bombs are dropping anywhere, maybe London is this quiet. Do you know what's happening with Papa? Have you heard from him? No, I haven't. But then he dislikes using the telephone almost as much as I do. We don't seem to be alone. Anyone we know? Apparently not. Just have to change my shoes, dear, after that country walk. You've got my other shoes, haven't you? Let me help you. Oh, thank you, my dear. I'm so glad you're here to keep me company, my dear. Thank you. And now I'm going to spoil it all and ask you just to scrape the shoes. Because if I put those shoes into the bag like that, they'll make these shoes all muddy on the way back. There's a scraper just round the corner. Dear, I was just telling the vicar we must do some fundraising for the restoration. After all, it was our family that built this church. And what a good job they made of it. And hopefully we'll still be looking after it in another thousand years. It must be marvelous to end up being part of such a family. To end up? I haven't just joined, you know. <laughs> of course. The slip of the tongue. I meant such an old established family. Well, since history. It must be such a good feeling. In Dolce, you belong. Let us our homage show. Our hearts joy recline. Let in precipio. A light that bright star shine. And light the gradio. Alpha SAO. Alpha SAO. Mr. Anne, is that car in safe 
to drive. I have to go to London urgently. I've got a message from work. That car isn't safe, Miss Anne. I've got to go. Get out of the way, Lucy. Miss Anne! Go, go! Miss Anne! Go, go! Head is closed. There's a military exercise taking place. You'll have to find another route through. Well, I'm going to London, so how do I get there? Find another route. Yes. Thank you for that. Just thought you might be able to help. Where was that lorry that passed me? You seem to have allowed him through with no problem. Can you switch your engine off, please. Can I see your identity card? My identity card? Well, I don't have one. You don't have one. From yesterday, everyone needs to carry an identity card. Miss, it's the law. There are no exceptions. I'm afraid I'm going to have to detain you. Detain me? Why? I've been down here in the country. I came straight from the film studio. That's why I don't have one. I really need to if get to London If you don't have a today. card, you're not going anywhere. I'm the daughter of a member of parliament, Sir Alexander Keyes. I'm sure that if you telephone him or allow me... Could you me step out of the vehicle, please? Move over to that side of the vehicle, please. Get into the vehicle. I think you might at least tell me where I'm going. Notice of the regulations. So this is what happens. I don't suppose you're going to tell me how long I'm going to be held here. I wouldn't complain if I were you, miss. We have the power now to detain anyone indefinitely. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. Avius corpus. Do you know what avius corpus is, miss? <laughs> of course. Of course I do. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. We can keep you as long as we want, wherever we want. Don't need to ask a judge anymore. Don't need to ask anybody. Don't even need to tell anyone where you've gone.
What are you doing? What has happened to you? Thank God you're here. Yes, Papa got a call from these policemen or soldiers or whoever they are saying you've been detained. They called the Houses of Parliament. And Aunt Elizabeth telephoned to say you just rushed out, coughing, like you're about to die in the middle of choir practice. <laughs> the vicar was heartbroken, apparently. Why did you do that, Gloria? I had to get away. I've got a bit of a confession to make, although it won't come as a great surprise. I'm terribly in love. I'm so in love with Lawrence. I couldn't bear to be away from him, shut away in the country like that. I had this incredible urge to see him. I... How wonderful, darling. That's fantastic. That is pretty romantic, glorious, yes. And we've got news. There's a party tonight at the Foreign Office, and we've sort of helped arrange it. Nothing can stop the parties happening, especially not this one. As you'll see, it's all the ambassadors. Laurent is going to be there, too. Isn't that good timing? He is. And now you've been detained. You've got to come, too. Dawson will drive your car back to Aunt Elizabeth's. I thought it was dangerous to drive. Apparently it is. That's why you shouldn't be driving it. But Dawson's expendable, isn't he? Lots more where you came from, aren't there? Which means that I get to drive the rolls for once, which is terrific. Now, come on, Glorious. We're host to tonight's party, remember? Lots to do. Yes, including a hot bath for you, darling. You look a real country girl like that. <laughs> You'll have time to have a really good wallow before you see him. You see, everything's gone now. It's all in storage. And with the whole town blacked out, isn't it strange, darling? Like being in another place completely. On the moon or something. <laughs> you look so lovely. Why, thank you. I am the hostess of this party in a way. So I'm just a tiny bit nervous. It's part of my new job. I'm attached to the court of St. James now. So I am going to need to go a little early. That's fine. I'll escort her in. We'll go together. All right. I must volunteer too. I have to do something for the war effort. No, Glorious, you don't have to do that. You're an actress. That's what you keep doing. Ah, but talking of volunteering... A lot of our childhood things down here. Not sure what's going to happen to them. Do you recognize him? It's Bombardier. Yes, of course. Aunt Elizabeth's cat. So, darling, this is a little bit nasty. But Aunt Elizabeth wants him put down because she shut up her house and left London. I was going to have to take him to the vet, but now you're here. Could you do it? I'm needed at work, you see. But I can't ask one of the servants to do it. And I would be so upset taking him anyway. Will you do it? Well, if that's what has to be done. You look so good, Glorious. Here you are. So far, no disasters. Well, you mean they haven't started throwing things yet? Give them time. Argentina has been extremely talkative. And, of course, America. Mr. Kennedy, he keeps going on about how much stronger Germany is than we are and how everything is over for us and we'd better realize it. <laughs> Darling, you must go downstairs to the other party. That's altogether more fun. series of flags here, these little flags, and somewhere on the map of the world over here is some treasure. So you stick your flag wherever you think the treasure is, and whoever is the nearest will get a rather marvellous prize. So, come on everybody, take a flag. Darling, there you are. It's terrific to see you. <laughs> You're not angry with me for leaving Norfolk? Of course not. I understand. Would you take this and organize the treasure hunt? Children, Ralph here will now be in charge. Gladly. Just don't forget to tell me where the treasure really is. 
It's all the children of the ambassadors in London. Poor things. Lots of them don't know whether they'll be travelling back to their countries or not. They don't know what's happening. Well, a bit like us, then. A bit like us, yes. I should never have sent you to the country with Aunt Elizabeth. How could I have done that? You belong here with all of us. Fantastic. Now, you must go and get yourself some jelly. Some jelly? Why? Oh, Lawrence. Hello, darling. Oh, I didn't know whether I would ever see you again. I didn't know whether you would really be here. Yes, they, they suddenly sent me to France. Don't cry. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. It's just for a moment everything seemed all right, and I know that really it isn't. Now then, when we've got all of our flags pinned up, I think we should have a little bit of a sing-song. Sing-song. What about a song from each of your countries? Does everybody like the sound of that? Yes! Something terrible is going on. I know. Ralph is involved? Yes, I know that too. You know? Do you think he really realizes the full extent of what they're doing? I mean, maybe he I, does. I don't know the answer to that. He's my brother. I can't believe that he. I want to believe that he could. What I found out is that there's a group of them in the Secret Service and a motley collection of other people, including some very determined aristocrats who are trying to bring this war to an end before it's even started. They think they haven't got a chance and they're determined to do a deal with Hitler. I think they killed my friend. Gilbert, and they blackmailed Hector. And they are very dangerous, yes. Be there at our waking, your faith are we pray. Your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. They drove Hector to kill himself. I've got a recording of a meeting. Can you give it to me? I don't have it here. I, I really have to have it. Proof is invaluable. I must get it tomorrow. We'll, we'll meet in the morning. Uh, Some place where I won't be followed. C'est la mère Michel qui a perdu son chat, qui crie par la fenêtre, qui le lui rendra. I know, um, the vet. <laughs> the vet? Uh, yes, I have to take a cab to be put down. We could meet there. Yes. Yes, that sounds rather perfect. It's all right, it's all right. We are in love. Are we? Well, that's what I told him. That's what he's going to see. I'm not in front of the children, Glory. Come along. <laughs> if we're going to use your idea, I, I better get the address of a vet because we can't use one that's near the house. It has to be out the way. In the suburbs, you understand? Yes. Right, I'll, I'll do that now. Use the great resources of the building. No, no, no don't go. I won't be, won't be a moment. I won't be a moment. He whistled and he sang till the green woods rang, and he won the heart of a lady. Now we've started the singing, we'll have to do every single country. Not my most brilliant idea. You come with me, Clarice. I've got something to show you. Come with you where? Follow me, it's important. I think you should come as well. It's such a big basement. Where are we going? You've only seen a corner of it. This is Miss Semmel. She's working late. She is. Now, we have two things for you, Anne. Your identity card. That was quick. Splendid. I asked Ralph to arrange it, and that is quick. Rather a long walk to get to it, though. So that's perfect. There you are. You have your card. You're officially you. I'd better get back to the ambassadors, darling. I've spent rather too much of this party with the children. They're so much more interesting. I'll come with you. Wait, just a moment. What is it? 
Why are you running away, Gloria? I'm not running away. Why would I do that? I don't know. I found out the other thing. The one that we talked about. Seems a rather appropriate moment to do it, to go with the card. If you want. You mean about my parents? What do you want to hear, or do you want to run off? All right, why not? Good night, Mr. Simmel. Good night. I think you will be pleased. It explains your theatrical bent, and I think it does. They were a Romany family. Your parents were gypsies. There are no pictures, sadly. One of them must have been blonde, wasn't they? Maybe they had Russian blood. Thank you. You're right. I do like the idea. I see nothing wrong in coming from gypsies. I think I'm going to go back to the party now. church this morning. You're here and you're in the church. Why are you here? I didn't realize you were the son of an ambassador. They thought I might be able to contribute to the party. Well, I surely will be. Excuse me. Ah! Don't you realize? Don't I realize what? Some more. Oh, thank you. I have an address for you. You see? You can find out anything here. Yeah? Yes, I've just discovered that. We'll meet there. Put the evidence you have into an envelope and address it to someone other than me. Right. Who? Doesn't matter, anyone. Uh, Winston Churchill. <laughs> Will they follow me, though? No. Keep an eye out, but I don't think so. They certainly won't follow you into the bed. I far too squeamish for that. There you are, darling. I'm just off to take Bombardier to the vet, but... Well, you know what for. Yes. What things have come to. There may be a lot of people at the vet, so I could be a little while. By the way, Anne, if it's not too much to ask, I think you should take Horatio, too. He needs to be done as well. Take our cat? Why? Because if I'm going to the US next week, we'll be shutting up the house. I'll take Bombardier because Aunt Elizabeth has asked for that to happen. I'll find another home for Horatio. I'm sure I can. No, darling, we can't do that. A lot of other people are having to do this. Surely they can be told it's not necessary yet, because it isn't. I find myself having to tell them that it is. Anyway, we'll get Dawson to see to it. Don't worry yourself. Come and sit with me and help me. I need your help. No, I'm the only one who's not doing anything at the moment, so I should do it, if that's what's required. I will take the cats to be put to sleep, and then I will come back and help you. There's no school anymore. These children haven't been evacuated, so they're running wild. We'll find Lawrence, but I won't let anything happen to you. I'll find a way.
support form. No, I've only just arrived. Have you come here to have your pets put down? I'm meeting someone first. I, I just have to see you. No, no, no. You can't join the queue until you've filled out a consent form. All those people have filled out their forms. You must fill out a form. In fact, you can go sit out there and fill out a form. Excuse me. Has anyone been asking for Miss Keys? No, Miss. Mrs. Evans? I, I haven't quite finished filling it out. I, I haven't signed it because I'm, I'm merely... Oh, that'll do. Not everybody signs them. As long as the form's filled Has out. Has anyone been asking for me? I, I was meeting someone here and until they... Let me come in, Miss... Miss Keys. Miss Keys. But I, I haven't joined the queue. I, I, I don't want a queue jump. <laughs> I've only just done the form. Please, come in here, Miss Keys. And bring your cats with you, of course. We're being inundated at the moment. I think because we have the space to deal with the large animals as well. Which, of course, you don't get in the centre of town. But it is amazing how quickly one gets used to such things. Why have I jumped the queue? You seem to us to be a little agitated. Agitated? There are people crying out there. I think I'm quite calm in comparison. We like people to be certain about what they're doing, and you seem rather upset and nervous. Believe me, I can tell. Well, maybe I just need a little time to sit and consider. And until I meet my friend, I really won't I be so. able... We have a little room just through there, precisely for that purpose, for people to make sure. It's best you use it.
Because you're so sweet. Yes. Miss Paula. Leon has gone home. Ben has gone home. I've changed my mind. I'm not ready to do this. Thank you for giving me time to reconsider. We really must call you a taxi. Miss Keys, you can't manage like that. Miss Keys! You're not safe with me now. Go. Go on. something for me. I... I need you to post this. I'll... I'll give you some money here. It needs a stamp. You'll get a stamp for it. It's really urgent. Lemonade might do the trick. I knew she was upset. People do find it upsetting. Well, I'll just leave it here, shall I? Why are you here? They found your number on the form and phoned me to say you were distraught. And then when I got here, you run out with the cats onto the common. Why did you come right out here dying to this place? I don't know. I couldn't bear to do it near home. I, I let them go. You let them go? Well, why not? It's terrible. Look what's happened in just a few days. It's like a vision of hell, isn't it? Animals going onto a fire in a quiet English suburb. The world's gone mad. People are finding out what war really means. Maybe we need something stronger than lemonade. Here, darling. Are you aware of what they are doing? They're doing something awful. Who, darling? Are you doing it too? Darling, back with us. 
The noise doesn't help, does it? It's just somebody's wedding. You're in Aunt Elizabeth's house. I thought Aunt Elizabeth's house was all shut up. Our home has been used for other things. And this is Mrs. Knight. She will look after you. Let's call it Thin Men Dancing. Where are you going? Don't you realize we want people to feel defeated? Feel there is no hope. Is that where we can do our deal with Germany? This is just so you can rest, darling. You've been ill. You must get better. Are they poisoning me? Poisoning you? Of course not, darling. I can still remember when I held you for the first time. When you arrived to be with us, a bundle. You came in a taxi with a nurse. And when I held you and felt you heavy in my arms, it was the most beautiful present. I could never let harm come to that. So you loved me then? Then, I love you. I thought you'd never wake up. I wish I hadn't. You're not eating your food, I see. Your father asked me to pay you a visit. My father? I don't believe you. Of course. He and I are working together. Have been for a long time. Your father is a very influential person. Charmingly absent-minded, but very, very influential. He hides his true seriousness, my dear, except from those of us who really know him. This recording of our meeting, the one you tried to post, was made for him, of course. I'm sure you knew that, my dear. All the records were for him. Why else would they have been stored at your house? It's a little hot, isn't it? using your house in London for a series of meetings. Your father is chairing those meetings. That is why you are here. How simple it is, and how very important. Are you going to kill me? My dear, what sort of question is that? Even for an actress? Really, the adopted daughter of my old friend. What could have given you such an idea?
What happened to her? You think we know? Yes. I think you do. You are a little feverish, aren't you, darling, I think? Hot and cold flushes. You've got a temperature. Mr. Borkham was here. You're mistaken, darling. Mr. Borkham was not here. I would never let him come back. We don't need to see that spooky man ever again. So quiet, isn't it? No children, no pets. It's the most peculiar thing, the silence out there. Except for the horrid bells. But then they're talking about stopping the bells ringing until the end of the war. Talk about a silver lining. That would be simply marvelous. Now oh, we need to find you something delightful to eat. I am not eating anything until you stop putting something else in it. Mr. Balkan was here. I didn't dream it. He had Lawrence killed. You're feverish, darling. You let that man come back and see me. How could you do that? This war is a terrible thing, my dear. As you know, I hate exaggeration, but everything we believe in, everything I believe in, Democracy, culture, will be destroyed if we get involved in this ruinous war. I certainly don't sympathize with Nazi ideology. In fact, I rather despise it. But there is absolutely no chance of us winning this war. We will be completely destroyed unless we make peace. And we are working to arrange that peace very hard. Nothing must disturb that. Ralph understands this. Celia understands it in her own way. But somehow I knew you wouldn't. So we have to keep you here. To do what with? To keep you safe. <laughs> I couldn't share certain things with you. What I need to do for this country. Maybe there are two sorts of love. I don't want to be made to choose. to the situation very careful. Well, nobody will ever listen to Anne anyway. She's got no evidence. But it is best that we do this. We can handle her. Come on, it's simple. We bring Mrs. Knight back. It's the best solution. Mrs. Knight will get something down her that will keep her completely quiet, sedated for days and days. And we can have an outing with the ambassador's children. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bastards! You are nothing to do with me! You will not bring that ghastly woman back here! You think I'm gonna let that bitch look after me? I will not let that fucking woman terrorize me! 
Why are you looking like that? I don't see why you should be surprised. I'm not frightened of you. Remember, I am the child of gypsies and it was bound to come out sooner or later what I'm really like. That's what you think, isn't it? Well, here it is! Darling. Don't you fucking darling me, you bastard! You are nothing to do with me! This is not the way, Gloria. Or just leave me alone with her. Why don't you ever do what you're told? Why do you insist that you always know best? Because in the end, what you never realized was you knew nothing. Okay, nothing that really mattered. But you would not listen to me, would you? I told you to get on with your life, and now look at you. So look at you! We just have to stop giving you water, Glorious. And it's all over. Never let you go away again. <gasps> I'm clear. Anyone there? Mama, did you open the door? Thank you, Mama. Go. What are you doing? I, I need to get away from here. Come this way. 
I'll find you a taxi. I will. Who are those children? I thought all the children had been evacuated from around here. They have. There they are. You can join your family, Anne. We're just giving the ambassador's children a little outing. Come and help. Come and join us, Anne. Anne! Come here, darling. Come to me. None of us saw her again. None of us? <laughs> she died, I believe, in Canada about 20 years ago. We're the only ones left. No words of condemnation for me? No, you were, you were very young after all. I, I was a baby, but it was such a long time ago, nobody remembers. I just did what they wanted. I did what Mr. Balcom and the family wanted. They said she needed to be taught a lesson. I was only doing what was expected. It was a very strange time back then. I even tried to warn her. They've all gone now. Can't trouble us. Can't trouble Walter. I must go. There is just one thing. A little favour. Another one? My mother arranged to meet me round here. She will have been waiting a little while now. It's, it's very close by. If you could just come and say hello. I know she'll appreciate it. Please. Will you come? Well, 
Walter, Oliver, this is my mother. And this is Anne Keyes. It's good to meet you again, gentlemen. It's so very good. Anne? I had no idea. No idea at all. No idea that I was still here. No, I know you didn't. You knew all along. You knew? We wanted to hear it from your own lips. I just wanted to say hello again. Since we are family.